I started the, the, um, the live stream on Milk and Honey. <laughs> I think because we're not talking about a specific product, but about anointing your house and yeah, big straight. <laughs> no, that's hundred percent. So welcome to all the listeners and those who will join on video. Um, yeah, to, I think today's talk is so important. Um, and it's really, again, just to start a conversation, it's going to be an in-depth study, but more to make you curious and just to realize, again, you know, of anointing your house. Um, is it a practice that you are familiar with? Um, yes, Steve. So you're breaking up a bit. Sorry, I don't know if it's my signal perhaps, but sorry if I talk over you. Yes, so um, we we recently moved in our house actually and then we anointed our home, but it's something we do quite regularly, um, especially this time of the year in the estate. Um, but yeah, no, um, it's something we are familiar with, but always keen to learn more. Okay. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm gonna teach you guys except if you're really new to this and you've never anointed your house. Um, but it's something that yeah, Abba just taught me over the years and again mm -hmm. like I spoke about <clears throat> and the prophetic prophetic acts and the power they are. Um and we've said that we can learn in the word that there's a lot of power in doing prophetic acts. For example, yeah. even just taking communion act because mm -hmm. you're not literally Drinking the blood of the Messiah, but using the the wine and the cup as a, um, and I mean the Bible, the word is full of analogies where Abba uses symbolism to teach us something. Um, we know that, and and also amazing that some can have more than one symbol. For example, he says that your word Abba, is as a lamp unto us. So the word can be a lamp. It can be seen as water to wash with. Um, it can be seen as as more than one thing. But if we look at oil, um, oil, the Hebrew word for oil is shemen, and the link between a name and oil. And even in if you go look in Song of Songs, it says that your name is like oil poured forth. So. It's not only by when you when you use anointing oil, it's not <clears throat> only by using oil, but in whose name you are doing it and what it is symbolizing to you. Mm -hmm. So you can anoint things, you can anoint people. We see word that they anointed somebody like a king or a prophet, they will use oil to to you know to pour it out on their heads. Um and the reason I think why they specifically anointed people on their heads was because it's a symbol of authority and your kingship. So when you anoint your husband, you're like actually proclaiming and seeing him as your king. Um, it's also your, your gateway to your soul. So when you anoint your children and you anoint specifically their thoughts and their dreams, you will usually anoint somebody on the head, if you're just anointing them to bless them. If you're anointing somebody because you want to heal them, you will maybe anoint them in they are sick. Okay. So uh, before we get to on exactly like how I anoint my house, I just quickly want to, so we've got a couple of anointing oil that we sell. Um, they are very prophetic and it's more for you when you're anointing a person or maybe anointing yourself. Um, as a prophetic act. So you can use any oil as a prophetic act and you can go look up the meaning of that oil. So let's say you're going through a season when Abba is speaking to you about a specific um, subject or a specific anointing or role that he wants to lead you into. You might Google, you know, what's the symbolism behind um, or what oil symbolizes that thing and you will get the oil and you will anoint yourself. Um, so it's really a very personal thing. Um, what will you use? There's not a, there's not a wrong. I mean, and if you cannot get your hands onto an anointing oil, you can just use normal olive oil. You know, it doesn't have to have, uh, an essential, essential mixed into it. So anointing oil is not special in the sense like Roman Catholics have holy water. <laughs> it's yeah. just an oil. 
potential oils for prophetic. So we do so sell. Steve, um, I just want to know if if it's only me. Um, I only hear some of your words. So if someone on on the um, live can just. I don't know, raise your hand or say something to say if it's just me, because I'm just scared that we miss some of the key things that you are saying. You can maybe press your button that says allow to speak. I won't allow you, but I can see that you are difficult. I have difficulty hearing me because I've got good signal. And um Okay, so she's um my mom says she can hear you clearly, so it's my signal. So no, then it's fine. Thank you. Sorry, Steph, about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but at least it will record. Yes. It won't be a problem with the recording. So if there's maybe things missed, you can watch it afterwards. So we we saw mirror oil. It's the brand is called Mirror. And they've got different anointings oil. They have the, the breath of God. God, it's gone. It's complete. So maybe if you've gone on a journey, deliverance, or I've been struggling with something for very long, and you're finally doing like deliverance, and you can maybe use that oil to say it's complete. Again, it's a perfect coming in alignment with. Um, she's got a pure nod anointing oil. I think nod was the oil that Yosha was anointed with, if I remember correctly, wasn't it? His feet, I think. Um, in Afrikaans, <laughs> Nardes. Afrikaans oh, yeah, Nardes. Yeah. In, she's got an Esther anointing. Well, I've had many people who feel they are being called into a season of that one for such a time as this, and they will many mm -hmm. times like uh, Esther uh, and Esther show together with the um, Esther anointing. Well, and that's a nice gift to give to somebody if you give yeah. them an Esther combine it with the oil. Many people has also have also purchased like the Melchizedek um, mm -hmm. and then they will purchase lime lamb. And so we don't have this one here, but um, ancient biblical oils have a lion and lamb. To me, that's a very, very prophetic oil. One mm -hmm. of my favorites. And it's very to me because it's about your calling as priest and, and king. In the line sure. with that oil. Um, then there's a protecting love and oil. I'm just quickly because we've got this big one of me, which is nice if you like maybe anoint like a big one or something else. Then we have Christine Beats with, I don't know her. She's from, she's a South African living in Korea. I don't know if she's still. But she's prophetic and she does a lot of teaching and prophetic workshops. But she's got some wells. You can go read up. They don't have much description on the bottles themselves. So they go read on the side. But it's um, beautiful. Sure. They're very, um, yeah. She's got some anointing wells in rollers. The rollers are nice. Mm. People throw them into their hand when they get somewhere they want and went somewhere <laughs> and then yeah, we have okay. sorry no i'm just saying it is nice to just have a small roll on that you can put in your handbag um that in that moment if you need to anoint someone or even just yourself it's nice to have it with you there <laughs> and then we have the free wheels from um, bridal harvest that I think many are familiar with. They've got the closer anointing oil. Then they have the I am. And then they have the Ani Ledo Di Vedo Di Li, which is um, songs of songs, which is I am my beloved and he is mine. So that's um, our anointing oils that you can use for people. Um, and then when, when you anoint your house, so we see in the Bible, it was also a practice in the tabernacle when they had sanctified things. I think they did it once in the temple when they put the tabernacle and they made the urns and whatever the utensils that they've used in the tabernacle was also sanctified by and sure. So when you're sanctifying your house, when you want to 
to anoint your house, it's a process of sanctification. But most important, your closing gates. So even if sometimes if you're anointing a person by using oil. So we have gates. We have to remember that the enemy, the enemy copies everything that's important to God. So if you see the enemy do, doing something or using something in spiritualism, you have to ask why. Why are they using this? Why are they defiling this? Because then, the, then there must be some truth to this. So if you look at yourself, we've got gates. We've got eye gates. So you can defile your eye gates through what you are looking at. You've got a mouth gate. You've got different gates. So if you, something similar in the occult will be your, what they call your chakras. Okay. For instance, if you have a, if you've been um, blessed as a child or then the certain gate um, that has been opened as well. So you will need to close that by anointing. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, a very important practice so when you are anointing your house you're also closing gates because sometimes um we open gates in our life without us knowing and mm-hmm. this spirit will come and he will convict you and he will lead you to repentance. but sometimes we open gates sometimes the enemy comes and with witchcraft they will open gates in your area in your house um, so it's, it's an important practice to do regularly. So mm-hmm. I'm going to make a petition and a prayer to, uh, to sanctify your house. I think when we share the video afterwards, we will just post that. It's a prayer for Ghana okay. Ministries. Um, but it's very lengthy. I don't think you need to do that every time. Maybe you can do it once a year or as Abba leads you. But if I go and anoint my house or my workplace, it's important to do all entrances. So that will include your windows and your doors, everything that leads to outside. Um, okay. You have to remember, we don't understand the spiritual world 100%. So we're also just learning all the time. The way I used to anoint my house 10 years ago and the way I do it now, it has changed. And I've added things because every time I learn a bit more, um, how the occultic works. And it's important to know because if, especially if you're in ministry, can get under attack and in our area there's a lot of witchcraft for us and they sometimes they really target your house so you have to know what strategies they use so you do your your window so what i'll do i'll I'll just take some oil i'll rub it on the top of the window and i'll just say in the name of yahusha i come now and i seal off this window to the spiritual world i cover it in the blood of the lamb and no entities allowed to enter here so it, there's not a specific recipe, but if you know, do it in the name of Yahusha, you cut it off from the use of mm-hmm. um, the occult and the second heaven, and you just do that with every window and every door. When you get to your people, it's also good to I will maybe add, um, I come in the name of Yahusha and I know this battle. Um, I also come and that the enemy will not use anything from our past because a sure. backdoor is sometimes something that's used of our history and our past. Um, I ask that you will put a gatekeeper here. But sometimes in the spirit, the enemy, um, the occult will, will they use very small spiritual entities like demons, they call them watchers. They will use watchers at, at your gates or at your interest, entrances to keep an eye on you and actually record what's happening. Because remember, sure. the, enemy, um, the enemy cannot be everywhere all the time. They're not omnipotent like Abba. So they work together. They, they form a system. So when you do also your windows and your doors, ask Abba to, yeah, to bind any watchers or demon spirits that are monitoring, monitoring spirits. You bind them in the name of Yosha and you ask them to leave your property. So that's an extra thing that you can do. So now we've done windows. Um, if it's a window that cannot open, I must be honest with you, I'm not sure. I'd rather anoint that because, um, and I'll tell you now why, because obviously spirits are not physical. They can still enter you know, through a window, even if it's not one that can open. Because what I've also learned, it's so important to, to um, anoint your mirrors in your house. 
I've learned that um, I don't know if it's only if it's the spirits as well, but people who are in the cult who do astral projection, um, they mirrors to travel. So yep. a mirror spirit can as a portal that makes you think back to stories like mirror mirror on the wall <laughs> in the Sleeping Beauty that we obviously now know is not Abba. But how it's used in these children's stories, because it, it's used, it, it has power in the spiritual realm. So you need to, to anoint your mirrors as well, and you bind it. And you say, Abba, we close any and all portals. In my house, specifically of this mirror, will not be used as a portal to any kind. And the spirit really, is, Abba has so much grace with us. He will teach you. He will remind you when you are walking, oh, I, I need to do this, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so windows, doors, um, mirrors. So that's why I'm saying, I don't know if a closed window, because it's a type of shining object, maybe can be used as a portal as well. I'm not sure. So rather do it. I mean, you won't lose anything. Then... Um, the last that's very important so that is this is also something kind of new i learned or the last thing i've learned is you need to to anoint your entrances of all the water points especially the drains so in your bath the drains where the um in your bathtub and in your wash basin and in your shower anoint them because water spirits can use them as access points um many experiences myself where we maybe anointed our house we forgot to <laughs> anoint the drains where i will have an, a spiritual experience experience where my spirit man's awake and i can literally sleeping i can sense that there's an entity trying to enter from my bathroom but he cannot enter our room he's literally standing at the door i can feel his presence but he cannot enter because he came through through the and water spirits manifest through water. So I know it sounds very weird, but trust me on this. The water spirits are very keen on entering the bedrooms because they are usually or all sex demon um, that gives nightmares and sex dreams. They are water spirits, so they will enter through your through your bathroom and water gates. Um, I think then the most important one is your front door. We haven't spoken about so. You will anoint all of your door, your front door and your gate. So your front door and your gate to your property. That is like your, um, what is a pua in English? Your uh, puerta. The your puerta. Um, you see, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. Your puerta or your, your entrance gate. And um, that is yours. Yeah, important. You have to ask Abba to to maybe this out basically if you're listening to it. Um, to also to place a watcher there to bless your entrance, so that everybody that comes in there will be blessed, and everybody that goes out will be blessed. Um, but it's we we where your puerta is, where your main entrance is. That's where you build covenant. That's where Covenants were usually made. Sure. So if a family has been living on a place for a long time, usually the spiritual altars of the land will be at the front door at the gate. So ask, break down any altars, show you if this altars that you do. No. If you've lived, if you live on a farm or on a property, even in the city, that you, that you think they might have been witchcraft or that some of your workers might have been um, do witchcraft. Maybe sometimes they do it unknowingly. So it's not that they always target you. To give you an example, when I first started learning about water spirits, um, I was at um, a friend's house, my sister's house, and the lady I was learning, she came to me to give me the teaching of water spirits. She got out and we started talking and found it so interesting. And my sister said, but I've got a lot of water problems on my property. So we've got a lot of leaks. Our roofs are always leaking. If it rains a lot, um, 
we've got a lot of water damage coming into the house, damaging our carpets. There's just always the water problem. The geysers are not working or it's breaking. Um, lots of problems with your That's all signs that there can be water spirits on your property. So if you haven't dealt with that in your bloodline and in your life, good. But it can also be that the workers are introducing water spirits on your property. So she was teaching us about this and, and she asked my sister, have you spoken to the people who work for you? What do they believe? Do they believe the word? My sister says, yes, well, more of the lady who works in the house, but not really with the man who works in the garden because the one is from another country and he doesn't speak proper English. So she called him. Very nice guy. I mean, there was no enmity between him and my sister but you ask him what's your name what country are you from what what um, faith what church do you belong to and he mentioned it and she knew it because she has a lot, a lot of knowledge about these things so she asked him before in front of us so it wasn't something that he tried to do in secret it wasn't something he tried to do to harm her it was because he doesn't know okay so he is it like a christian he belongs to a church but just like we were on misled and we've got lots of practice in our churches that are not from Abba, the same are with them. They've got things mixed in, in from their culture. So she asked him, do you ever bring water onto the property and then pour it around on the behrens, on the boundary? And he said, yes, he's done that before. And she also asked him, do you ever bring water and mix borehole? And he said, yes, he's done that. And then she was like, okay. And we, like I said, it wasn't something he was trying to hide. Oh, because yeah. to a place, those spirits in them make them feel uncomfortable. They feel like they don't really know what they feel, but they feel uncomfortable. And then they'll go see somebody and they'll say, okay, take this water and then go sprinkle it. They don't even know they are dealing with water spirits. They don't even know why they're doing it. They just do it. But they will mix your water and they will mix water on your property. Yeah, so just ask Abba. He says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, I will show you things that you did not know and things that you did not understand. So if you ask him to reveal these things on your property and to bring it to light, you know, you will be faithful. But you can, by any way, walk around your property and just anoint every year and there on the, on the post or how Lead you, but you can anoint your boundary, you can anoint all of those things. Um, mm -hmm. The last thing I want to mention is many times in the old properties, maybe you're moving into a new house and there's been many previous owners and workers. It can be that sometimes in the occult, they they bury things in the, in, on the property. So you can also have to, have to reveal that, but most of the times it will be in the four corners of the house in the four corners okay. of the property. So you can just go there and bind any spirits and anoint the corners. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Steph. Yeah, I think on that, I also just want to share so about anointing and anointing your home. So um, I've also, I just felt led by the Holy Spirit to in the mornings when I wake up, or just before I go out to, to go about my day, to anoint myself with... Um, pomegranate oil which is represents fruitfulness and just to anoint myself to to ask Abba that I will bear his fruit in this day that I will will walk um in obedience to his laws but also that he will give me revelation of his word and that he will touch my mouth and my eyes and my ears so that I'm only open to what he wants to teach me and through his spirit then teach others as well um and it's just so beautiful because it, it links to what you said about the type of oil. Um, yes, fruitfulness as well in terms of physical fruitfulness, but also it's so important that we are known by the fruit that we bear. So um, I'm just, I just felt it on my heart that Abba is really telling me that he wants me to bear fruit that is glorifies him and that is in line with his kingdom. Wow. And um yeah, just as it, as I started to anoint myself um, some mornings, it's not every morning. He just, um, the Holy Spirit just leads me to anoint our door of our room, the windows of our room, and also our bed um, and our pillow so that we will have dreams 
dreams yo, um, from our Father and that our sleep will and our peace will not be disrupted. Um, so it's really also something that I truly believe is led by the Holy Spirit. And he will, like you say, show you hidden th things of which you're unaware and lead you to anoint the places that he wants you to anoint in that moment as well. Yes. Um, oh, the last thing I didn't mention. So like I've said, if you anoint your house, you can just use olive oil. Um, what I like to use many times with people when I do deliverance I went my house. I like to use ancient biblical oils as a blend, a chayisop blend. Mm -hmm. okay? um, or you can make your own blend. But chayisop is because, you know, um, when they were in um, Egypt, <laughs> yeah. they had to apply the blood of the lamb with hisop, specifically with hisop. So it's just a symbolic thing. But it will be even more amazing if you mix hisop with mirror if you add some mm. mirror symbolic of the blood of the lamb you've got the olive oil, symbolic of his name of the set apart spirit um and then obviously the hyssop i think we must make an anointing oil like that um, <laughs> but i've also heard a person do symbolically which abba she's, she's into deliverance and counseling and what she's done in the past when Abba gave her specific assignments and she had to do um, anointing in places. Also, it's a prophetic mixture. Some people are afraid of this, but they say, but it sounds like witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. It is symbolic. There's no power in what you are using. It's about what you come in alignment with and the power is in his name. Mm -hmm. But they will do, they will mix some oil, red wine and salt. Because again, oil is a symbol of the spirit. Um, salt is a symbol of the covenant you are standing mm. in. Then the wine is of his blood, but you can substitute that with mirror oil because that's also symbolic of his blood. Yeah. Um, oh. And anoint your your place with that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, just the last thing, um, I think it's it's just a testimony of that Abba Father is really in the big and the small. Um, so. I've also a few a few months ago our dog was was ill and um we took him to the vet and there was a diagnosis and everything and then for two weeks they said is they're going to see if they can do anything for him um once the tests come back if he will still be able to live. So it was really a, a bad diagnosis. And for two weeks um I asked people to pray with us, but I anointed him every morning and every evening. And I think the verse is in Deuteronomy where it speaks about where you anoint your livestock and your cattle. And I spoke that word over him and that song, I speak the name of Jesus over you while anointing him. Anointing him. And after the two weeks, um, we took him back. They removed his stitches and I asked them, what did the test say? What is the result? And they said, oh, no, it's nothing major. There's nothing wrong with him. He's a brilliant little dog. Um, even they had a problem with his nose. He can't breathe. And then I asked them about his nose. They said, no, this is how their noses should look. You can be very happy with your dog. He's beautiful. So it was really a 180 degree turn. And it really just, I just want to testify how Abba uses his power through anointing oil, but also through our coming into alignment with him and praying over our homes, over ourselves, over our pets, um, and you will, there's power behind that. I mean, and I think there are, if you go and search, there's so many testimonies. I think we can again learn from people who were born again that came out of the occult. There's so many yeah. testimonies. I read Rebecca Brown's books, for example. She's a medical doctor who her calling was, it's very hectic, but her calling was to specifically help people who come comes out of the occult sure. so to help them to deliver them because they are ensnared in so many things it, it's an easy process. but anyway there's so many testimonies of the people who are in the cult what they experience and what they see in the spirit when people anoint their houses and themselves um, mm -hmm. anoint their, um and i just want to encourage you when you travel anoint your car anoint your um if you're on a plane and went your seat because your hotel room, because in that moment in time, you are the owner. If you're paying for something, you mm -hmm. have the authority. 
um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going <laughs> to go on now. I do want to invite you to join us tomorrow. Tomorrow we are talking on milk and honey, and we will just be really speaking about ancient history and why it's such an amazing living language. Um, I mm -hmm. have a course in ancient Hebrew, and we will share the links afterwards. So please join us. So tomorrow will be today is our last product session for this year, and tomorrow will be a teaching session for the year. So please join us. And I also want to ask you and encourage you share these videos. That's why we do mm -hmm. them on Atava and um, oh, on Telegram, where you are able to record it, where you are able to save it. Share it out into the world. And when you share it, all I ask is listen. You can tell them listen to this message, or it's interesting. Um, if you want to know more or see more videos, please follow them at Tava and just um, of our Telegram pages because it's really more than about just selling products. They educate the body and equip the body mm -hmm. so we will be able to, yeah, to Absolutely. be free. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye. Bye.